Welcome to Yoga Within Your Home. I'm Daria and today's class will be a gentle class with a little bit of sneaky strength thrown in there. Today we will begin lying on our back. So if you're comfortable lying down, you can make your way onto your back. Just taking a moment to let your body settle. So you might have your knees bent. You might extend your legs out. If you extend your legs, maybe have a little bit of space between your feet. Let your arms rest either on the floor with the palms facing up. You might rest your hands on your belly if that feels a little more grounding today. Do have some length in the back of your neck and do let your head be heavy. You might close your eyes or just soften your gaze. And as your body begins to settle in, just take a nice deep inhalation and a releasing exhalation. Maybe doing that one more time in your own time. Inhaling deeply and exhaling completely. Letting go. Beginning to draw your awareness inwards. Just noticing your body, how it's feeling today. Noticing how you're feeling mentally and energetically. Just allowing all of your observations to help guide your practice today. Always remembering it is your practice. The things I say are just suggestions. Begin to tune into the feeling of the breath moving in the body. Feeling that sense of expansion as you inhale. And that sense of settling as you exhale. Just feeling your breath coming and going. I'm taking a slow, gentle inhalation and a releasing exhalation. Just moving your fingers and your toes circling through your wrists and your ankles like a couple of times in each direction. And letting that movement pause and just gently turning your head from side to side. Maybe two times to each side. And bringing your head back to the center, bending your knees drawing your knees into your chest for a moment. You can wrap your hands around your shins or the backs of your legs, just rocking a little bit from side to side. And then pausing at the center, bring your foot soles down to the floor. Have your feet, your knees and your hips about the same distance apart. Arms can rest beside the body with the palms facing down. We'll begin to move with the breath. So just know that you can absolutely move with your own breath. We all breathe at different rates and if your breath gets mixed up, just keep breathing and moving. With your next inhalation, reach your right arm up overhead and extend your left leg out along your mat. And as you exhale, bring that back. Hand comes down, knee bends. And then inhale and change sides. Left arm, right leg extend. Exhale, come back. So just alternating from side to side, reaching opposite arm and leg away from the center of your body. Knowing that if you need to adjust this in any way, please do. Sometimes it doesn't feel good to take the arm up overhead. And so maybe today is a day where you open your arm out to the side or even just inhale palms up and palms down. Entirely up to you. Just beginning to flow a little bit with your breath as you establish a 
rhythm to your breathing. And we'll do one more to each side. And then coming back to the center, just pause here. You can stay with that variation. It's a little more gentle. It's a little more supported. Or you can add a little bit more strength to that movement, picking up your legs, having your knees bent about 90 degrees, having your feet flexed. Again, you're about hip distance apart, ankles, knees, and hips. This time your arms can reach up towards the ceiling with the palms facing each other. And it's the same movement with the same breath. So as you inhale, reach your right arm and your left leg out along the mat. You can let that foot touch the floor or you can let it hover. And exhale, come back. Inhale, change sides. Left arm, right leg extend. Exhale, back. So again, just flowing with your own breath. Kind of thinking about the movement coming from the center of your body. So you're reaching out from the center and you're using that strength at the center of your body to help move your limbs. So just alternating from side to side. And we'll do about one more to each side. Finding some length as you inhale coming back as you exhale, really trying to control the movement so we're not flopping out from side to side, we're using that strength. As the knees come in, you can wrap your hands around your shins or the backs of your thighs and again, rock a little bit from side to side. And then pause at the center, bring your foot soles back to the floor, this time take your feet about mat width apart. Reach your arms up, hold your elbows, and see if you can get your elbows right into the palms of your hands. It doesn't work for everybody, so if you need to hold your forearms or your wrists to give your shoulders a little more space, please do. But if you can, see if you can tuck those elbows right into the palms. And again, moving with the breath. So as you inhale here, then exhale, take your elbows to the right, take your knees to the left. Inhale back to center and exhale, change sides. So again, we're controlling the movement. It's like that movement is coming from the center of the body and you're just alternating side to side or rotating side to side. Arms and legs move in opposite directions. We're not worrying too much if the arms or the legs touch the floor. They might, they might not. We just want to introduce a little twist into the body. You could also move your head if that feels good. Some people like to follow their arms. Some people like to move in the opposite direction of the arms. Do one more to each side and then come back up to the center pause, decide if you'd like to do that same variation, if that's enough for you, or again, introducing a little bit of strength. You can pick your knees up toward your chest, bring your hands together so that all 10 fingertips are touching, but there's space between your palms. Hands are in front of your heart, knees are tucked in, same movement with the breath as you Exhale, take your arms over to the right, take your legs towards the left. Inhale back to center and exhale, change sides. Again, we're not worrying too much about touching the floor. Actually, if you want to use a little more strength, just take your legs about halfway down towards the floor. So again, we're not flopping, we're controlling that movement from the center of our body. Just following your breath. We'll do maybe one more to each side. Head can turn or not entirely up to you. Coming back up to center, pause. Again, tuck the knees in and rock from side to side. 
and then pause at the center. Bring your feet down to the floor, bring your foot soles together and drop your knees wide so you're coming into that reclined bound angle or supta baddha konasana. Just pausing here for a couple of breaths. Just noticing again how you feel, how your body feels, how your breath feels. Take one more full breath here. Pick your legs back up. You can roll to one side and help yourself up or roll yourself all the way up to a seated position. If you can sit cross-legged, great. Have your right foot in front if you're sitting cross-legged. You can always sit on the edge of a blanket or block if that's helpful to you. And if your knees bother you at all, you can always extend one leg or both legs out to the side. Entirely up to you. Starting with a nice long spine, we'll begin with some body rotations. So lean your torso forward and start to rotate over towards the left. Just moving in a way that feels good to you. So this can be a little more in the hips, it could be a little more in the rib cage. Just a little bit of exploration here, how the body feels. And then coming back down through center, pick yourself back up, lengthen the spine, extend your left leg out to the side and take a moment just to adjust here a little bit. You could have that right foot tucked in really tight. Some people need to open it up a little bit more. Sometimes you need to prop that knee. So just give yourself that moment to get comfortable do feel that both sitting bones are rooting down into the ground evenly. Take the back of your hand to the top of your leg, the left hand to the left leg. Take the back of your right hand and rest it on your low back and sit up tall here. Moving into a gentle side bend, you're just going to slide down that leg a little bit. And notice if you slide down, if that right shoulder wants to lean forward, Think about opening up through that right shoulder. So as if you could keep that shoulder on the wall behind you. So you're just feeling a little opening through the front of the body. And then pick yourself up. You can repeat that same variation or this time reach your right arm up to the ceiling and we'll slide down the leg again. So a little more length, a little more work for the shoulder. Just taking a breath here and then pick yourself up. Release that arm down. So bring your hand down to the floor and we want it to kind of land underneath the shoulder, but you might need to play around with that position a little bit. Here, we're going to press down into the hand, lift ourselves up, coming onto the right knee and placing that left foot down on the ground. So here, you wanna think of pressing your hips forward you want to think of pressing that left foot into the ground, pressing your right hand into the ground. Maybe your left arm stays alongside your body or maybe it reaches up to the ceiling. If that feels good, maybe you take it overhead. And again, instead of rounding forward, we think of opening up through the front body. And then let that arm come down, let the seat come down, come back to center. Bring your left foot in so that it is in front of the right foot. We're changing sides, sitting up tall. Lean your torso forward and find those rotations in the other direction. So it doesn't really matter this time. I'm going to the right. Just try to do the opposite of what you did last time. Will feel a little bit different. So you can keep them nice and low. You could keep them up a little bit higher. Just wherever it feels good today. And the next time you come forward, pause. Pick yourself back up. Lengthen up the spine. Extend your right leg out to the side. And again, just take that moment to 
settle into the posture. So, you know, it could feel really different from side to side. Remember, your option is to prop the knee, to take the foot away, or you can tuck it in. You want to feel your sitting bones level and your spine lifting. Back of the right hand rests on the top of the leg. Back of the left hand rests on the low back. Shoulders are square to the front and we start to slide down that leg. So again, being mindful we're not rounding forward, we're opening, finding a side bend here. And it can be nice to sort of send the breath into the side of that body, that left rib cage. Be mindful of your neck. Sometimes it feels better to look down. Sometimes it feels better to look straight ahead. Pick yourself back up. Either repeat that or this time reach your left arm up. Slide down that leg, finding a little more length. Being mindful you're not rounding forward. You're drawing that arm back. Another breath here. And then pick yourself up. Release that arm down. Take the hand to the floor behind you. Again, we want to land so the hand's relatively underneath the shoulder. Press down through that hand. Lift yourself up off the floor. Bring your right foot sole down to the floor. And start with your right arm resting alongside your body. Think about your pelvis, your hips pressing forward. And maybe you stay here. Maybe you reach the arm up to the ceiling and find some length. Maybe you take the arm overhead. Keep pressing your hips forward. Keep pressing down through your right foot. Keep pressing down through your left hand. And then with control, lower yourself back down. Bring your right foot back in. Again, find some length in the spine. Take your hands to your knees couple of seated cat movements. So again, with the breath, maybe you inhale, look up, think of squeezing your shoulder blades together. And as you exhale, tuck your chin, spread your shoulder blades apart, draw your belly in, that movement from the center of the body again. Lifting as you inhale, then rounding as you exhale. One more time, just in your own time lengthening the front body and then rounding through the back body coming back up to seated roll your shoulders a couple of times and then come into a tabletop position and just pause in your tabletop so kind of Get used to having your hands on the floor, fingers spread wide, tops of the feet are on the floor. And we'll actually begin with a couple of those cat movements again. So as you inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly, lift the chest, look up. And as you exhale, scoop the tailbone under, draw the belly up, spread the shoulder blades and relax the head. Two more of those. Again, movement coming from the center of your body. One more. And exhaling, rounding. Pause at the center so you're back in tabletop. You can adjust. Remember, you can always adjust your hands. You could be on fists. You could come down to your elbows. Just manage your wrists. Take breaks whenever you need to. From here, we'll find that same movement that we were doing when we were on our back, only it's just sort of a different way to bear weight this time. So as you inhale, reach your right arm and your left leg out. And as you exhale, come back to tabletop. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, back. So again, we're alternating from side to side. We're just finding as much extension as we can through the fingers, through the toes. And we'll do one more to each side. A little bit of balance. And again, that movement is coming from the center of the body. Next time that hand comes down, pause. Walk yourself up to a high kneel. 
Make tight fists and just circle out your wrists a few times. Go both directions. Give your hands a little shake. And then let your arms relax. Your shoulders are staying over top of your hips. And we're just going to lean back until you feel the fronts of your legs turn on. And come back up. And we'll do that again. Lean back. Quads turn on. And come back. One more. Lean back. Quads turn on. And then pick yourself up again. And then from here, we'll come into tabletop again. And you can stay with that first variation, that reaching opposite arm and leg is a really good way to build strength and to work on your balance. Otherwise, we'll tuck the toes under, adding a little more strength to the movement. Hands are underneath the shoulders, fingers are spread wide, toes are tucked. From here, just see if you can press down through your toes and hover your knees an inch off the floor. And then have a look at your knees and notice if you hovered an inch off the floor or if you lifted a foot off the floor. Try to stay really, really low so your knees are just barely above the floor. And then from here, could you, and do which side makes the most sense to you, could you pick up a foot and keep low and place it down? Could you pick up the other foot and stay low and place it down? Place your knees down on the ground, walk yourself up and shake your hands out. Give your wrists a little break. So we'll try another variation. So remember your option is to always go back to that moving balance or come back to tabletop. Toes are tucked, fingers wide, hands under the shoulders. Hover the knees, check how high you've hovered them. Bring your head back in line with your spine. Your weight will definitely shift as you see if you could pick up one hand off the floor and hold and then place that down, keep your knees low, shift your weight, pick the other hand up off the ground and place it down. And then totally bonus time, could you pick up one foot, one hand and place it down? They definitely lift higher, the knees definitely lift higher. Other foot, other hand and place it down. Place your knees down, take your knees wide Toes come together. Maybe you send yourself back to a child's pose. You could rest your face in your hands. You could stack fist over fist. Or maybe you rest your forehead on the floor. Entirely up to you. Just take a moment to let yourself settle. Surprising amount of work, especially a lot of work for the wrists, which don't get a lot of strengthening. Take one more breath here. And then walk yourself up to a seated position. And then walk yourself up to standing. Just pausing in Tadasana, that standing posture. So a little bit of space between your feet Toes point forward, shoulders relax. Can wiggle yourself out a little bit. Think of rooting down through your big toe mound, your baby toe mound to the back of the heel, and stand tall. Arms come forward. Again, hold your elbows. See if you can get your elbows right into the palms of your hands. And like before, if you need a little more space for your shoulders, just move down the arm a little bit. But we're trying to hold fairly close. Shoulders are kind of relaxing down. We just don't want to be here hunching up. So shoulders are dropping down a little bit. But then think of pressing your elbows forward. And as you press your elbows forward, you should feel the backs of your shoulders turn on a little bit. So a little bit of strength for the backs of the shoulders. 
Just taking another breath here. And then change the clasp of your hand. So take the other hand so that it's in the front. Same idea, shoulders are kind of dropping down, but then you press your elbows forward. So you might feel your shoulder blades move apart a little bit, and they should feel a little bit engaged. A little bit of work here. Another breath. And then from here, bring your palms together and see if you can bring your elbows together. So not everyone's elbows touch. We have lots of shoulder stuff that's going on. If your elbows don't touch, you're working them towards each other. So there's effort here. You're not just hanging out, you're squeezing them together. If your elbows come together, squeeze. Keep squeezing into the elbows. And if all of that is going well, look at your wrists without bending your wrists move your hands apart. Keep squeezing your elbows together. So you want to watch that it's not this. Where it's not a wrist bend. There's no wrist bending. You're actually just moving your wrists apart. Hands stay straight. Keep pressing the elbows together. Keep pressing the elbows forward. You might find that you're shaking. It's perfectly okay. Take another breath here. Bring your hands together, relax your arms. Shake them out a little bit. It's a lot of work for the backs of the shoulders. And then come back to center, stand for a moment. From here, a little more work for the shoulders. Bring your right hand up, turn the back of the hand to face behind you and then bend your elbow and take your hand towards your back, but don't touch your back. We don't want to touch the clothing or your back body at all. Bring your left hand forward. Turn the thumb down. Reach behind you so that your hands are coming towards each other, but we're not touching the back of the body or using our clothing or using a strap. We wanna have effort here. And then switch your hands so that the other one is on top. And we'll do this a few times, just moving from side to side, really trying to touch your hands together but knowing that you can't use your body to work them there. So if you go, actually next time your arms come to your back, just rest your hands on your back and notice how that's different. Then take your hands away from your back and try to touch your hands together and notice that that's just a different kind of effort. And then one more time to each side. Big shoulder movement, so be mindful of how your shoulders feel. Let your arms release and roll your shoulders out. A few times in one direction and then a few times in the other direction. And then pause. Come down to mount or come to mountain pose, a little bit of space between your feet, toes point forward. We're going to, and you might just want the wall for a little bit of balance or a little bit of help with balance, lift up your heels and lower them down. And lift and lower, lift and lower. Keep going. You can go a little bit faster. One more, pause, heels down. This time turn your toes out so you're really duck footed. Your toes are pointing out to the sides and we'll do that same thing, lift and lower. A few times, if you're comfortable going a little bit faster, you can go a little bit faster. Get a few more repetitions in. Next time the heels come down, pause. Turn your toes in so now you're a little bit pigeon toed. So we're Strengthening our calves here, 
we just want to get all the different parts of our calf muscles so we're changing our foot position a little bit so again we're lifting and lowering with the big toes together they might be touching they might not but you're a little bit pigeon toed for sure going a little bit faster if you want let's do one more lower the heels down toes point forward you can shake out the legs a little bit so from here, you might come down to the end of your mat and we'll move into a forward fold. So just letting your body be kind of relaxed. You can have a little bit more space between your feet. Let your chin drop towards your chest. Let your shoulders round forward. Let your rib cage drop. Soften through the hips, soften your knees, really bend your knees, and maybe you just pause halfway here. Just keeping that head above the heart if you have any dizziness or any pressure in your head. Just be careful with that. If you're okay, you can continue to round yourself forward. Let your head just relax. Let everything be super soft and bendy. And then bend your knees enough so that you can get your hands to the floor and start to walk yourself forward. If you super love a plank, you could hold a plank for a couple of breaths. You could always drop your knees to the ground or you can lower yourself all the way down onto your belly. You might stack hand over hand and rest your forehead on the back of your hands. Pause for a moment. And then from here, kind of roll a little to your left side. Slide your right leg out so that your knee is bent. And then lay yourself down on your belly again. Just pausing for a breath. One more breath here. Slide your right leg back in and move to the other side. Slide your left leg out to the side and then lay yourself back down on your belly. Forehead can rest on the back of your hands. One more breath here. And then slide your left leg back in pause for a moment and then decide if you'd like to just roll over onto your back for shavasana or maybe you'd like to press yourself up into tabletop and do a couple of cat movements and then from there you can make your way onto your back as we start to get ready for Shavasana. Last few moments of relaxation. You can draw your knees into your chest. Rock a little bit from side to side. And then pause at the center. Feet come to the floor. You could extend your legs. You could bend your knees. Arms could rest on the floor or they could rest on the body. Again, do have some length in the back of your neck. And do let your head be heavy. Just allowing your body to settle. Again, you might take a nice deep inhalation and a long letting go exhalation. Just letting go of the effort of your practice. Feel your heart beating. Feel your breath coming and going. Feeling that sense of expansion as you inhale. And that sense of settling as you exhale. Taking the next few moments just to rest. Taking time for peace. And time to simply be.
If you are happy here and you need to stay for longer, please just ignore me. Otherwise, you need to draw your awareness back. Maybe bringing some gentle movement into your body in a way that feels good to you. You might take a moment to roll to one side and pause there. As you're ready, you can help yourself up to a seated position. Just coming to a comfortable seat. Bring your hands out to the side and gather up all of the positive energy you've created. Draw it into your heart. Pause for a moment of gratitude. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be happy. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. And thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.